It's Sunday the 19th of June 2022 and I'm sat in the uh, morning room at the front of Noblethorpe Hall which uh, I've managed to purchase. Very happy here, very restful. Things are working out for me. Uh, all things work together for good. I thought I'd sit here in front of the window because um, you might get bored. Uh, this series of videos now is particularly designed to open the eyes of cults, especially the PBCC or Plymouth Brethren Christian Church. Uh, so I'm afraid it's not easy, it's interminable, the complexities. In a sense it needs Einstein to work out what's gone on, but I've been giving it my best shot. I've got questions to ask and I hopefully will do that in a respectful way uh, that uh, demonstrates that um, I'm fair, understanding, having been in what I now see as a cult, I have to identify myself with the situation that my friends in there find themselves in. And um, I trust that this video will help to acquaint them with the other side of the story. Uh, this side of the story that's cut off from them because of this big wall of separation uh, that uh, they put between those inside and those out. I'm out. But I'm actually in morally, I think. My lawyers have made the point to Bruce Hales and his merry men, <laughs> excuse the expression, that um, I'm actually in line with the fundamental teachings of mainstream Christianity, and they call themselves a mainstream Christian organisation. Uh, the teachings of scripture, uh, yeah, we failed. I don't see that that's an issue because uh, if we confess our sins, he's, a, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins. Not the church, he, that's Christ. So uh, please, um, whatever church you're in, don't allow elders and officials and so-called leaders, there's, no, there's only one leader, that's Christ. So don't let any religious person kid you that he's the leader. No, no. At best, he's put you, puts you in touch with Christ. If he's leading you to Christ, that should be the pure, unadulterated motive. And leaders should hold themselves accountable to the congregation to demonstrate that they are only leading to Christ. So that's just a little aside. I hope to go through um, a bit of an introduction uh, in the first part of three sets of videos. And then I will endeavor to just outline some of the principles I stand for uh, and go over the Bible, just briefly. And the gospel, the glad tidings. And then um, raise my issues. Just lay them on the table for the 55,000 members of the PBCC to consider in the cold light of day, unafraidedly, and meet in assemblies, individual assemblies, because the Charity Commission regard each place as making its own decisions as to its own administration. So if 
Leeds Church, Horses of Gospel Hall Trust, excommunicate me, it's their decision. It would be totally wrong for anybody else to influence that decision because they have declared themselves to the Charity Commission as individually responsible. So the 350 members of the Leeds Church have got to seriously consider what they've done to me. Um, I'm not lodging this by way of complaint. I don't want anyone to get onto the personal sidetrack. I just want the principles to be looked at. Uh, and, the, and, and the brethren to know the effects of excommunication. Rebukes, if you like. Rebukes. I had a series of rebukes in church. Then I was shut up. They took my family and everything away from me, including my business, my money, um, my social circle, my life, really. Uh, and then they, because I didn't come calling back and saying, God's indeed amongst you, and saying that Bruce Hales is the man of God, uh, and the Paul of our day, and all the other buttering up things that they say, um, they excommunicate me. Poof, out you go. And, you know, I get a phone call from one of the priests, a guy called Roger Edwards of um, Bramhope, Leeds. And uh, he says, we've withdrawn from you. He said so he was on a train platform, so he couldn't speak. So I just gave him a message to give to the brethren, so I didn't accept it, um, which I hope he did. He probably didn't. Uh, but uh, it's important that the brethren in Leeds take this as a model case. I think the... Charity Commission in 2012-13 used Leeds and Torbay as test cases for the rest of the country. So let's see how Leeds are getting on with complying with the uh, legislation that was imposed on them by the British government in 2013. Uh, um, are there any cover-ups? Is there anything being hidden from the government? Is uh, the, the spokesman, Garth Christie, my younger brother, Bruce Hazel from London, are they making sure that the legislation and the inclusiveness and the inviting of opposers in that they preached in front of the government, are they actually walking the talk? Are they doing what they said they'd do? Are they acting legally? Or was that a big show? Was it a sham? Was it, was it make-believe so that uh, they can save themselves uh, millions upon millions upon millions upon tens of millions upon hundreds of millions of pounds at the expense of the British taxpayer? So um, we then need to... Um, just look at, I will then go on and look at moral principles that I stand, stand for. And hopefully, by going through, having gone through the history a little, uh, I think things went wrong in that particular church in 1959 when uh, separation was rigidly and arbitrarily imposed so that uh, it came between families. So. If one person in the household was in the religion and one was uh, excommunicated, they had to leave, leave each other. Well, I think family comes before religion. Certainly alongside it, you don't use religion to break up families. Never. Or to destroy people so that they think about committing suicide, let alone, let alone commit suicide. If you are um, destroying people's lives and defaming them, you are putting them on the road to, I know they said hell, but to actually destroy their self-confidence. Now, yes, we're all sinners, but Christ has died. We're not, in, we're not here to impose fear on people. Certainly not. We're here to set people free, free from their sins. That's what elders do, good elders in any church. Uh, there's no other motive, just delighted. Their happiness is bound up with the happiness of others. And I can't see that excommunic excommunicating people who have put their lives and souls into a religion can be justified in any 
shape or form, uh, unless there is some very, very severe evil, which, uh, uh, which will be very rare. And indeed, if someone fails, say someone fails in, in the marital connection, well, put it right with your wife. It's not really the business of these freaking priests. Uh, they can keep out, sort it out with your wife. If, they, if you're married, got an issue. And if, if you come to blows, well, ask for positive priests who are going to bring in healing and have, have no other motive than uh, reconciliation uh, because they just want the best for everybody. That's care, isn't it? So um, I'm also following up letters that I've written in to my brother, copied into 29 uh, senior brethren members in Leeds and other localities across the north of England. Uh, so um, this is, we're in serious times. I want them to take me seriously for a change. Uh, I'd like them to um, understand that I'm genuine. I'm, they can't, it's easy enough for them to say I'm mental. And that's what I was told in there. Sent me for MRI scans and completely tried to destroy my any sense of self-confidence, any sense of self-worth I had. Uh, uh, but um, I've come through. Um, why? Because I trust in Christ. Let me just read that beautiful psalm, which is often sung as well, isn't it? Jehovah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. That's nourishing. That's, it'll be fresh grass. You might occasionally see a cow, one of my 13 cows uh, running behind me. Uh, well, they're, they're, in, they're really enjoying it here. We've got 18 acres, luscious pasture. We've got a water trough that fills up. And... Uh, they're just satisfied. They're happy. It's sad that we've got, they're going to go to the butcher next year. Um, I'm afraid that's life. But we don't want to, that's, that's, that's the world we're in. But we don't want to butcher people. Uh, no, not psychologically. No, no, no. We don't want people to uh, um, not enjoy the benefits that we enjoy. We just want to include all in the blessings and glory of what we're enjoying. He restoreth my soul, beautiful. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And that's the issue. It's unrighteous to take people away from their families. I'm absolutely convinced of it. There's no need. If, if a man commits himself to a woman, uh, it's not a religion's job to break up that link. It's, uh, I was going to say, almost divine. So, uh, you might say, I've left my wife. Well, I was made to, I was forced to. And uh, my wife was a simple person, quite simply, she was coerced into thinking that I was a bad man by the leadership. I think she was happy if the truth were known. I think she's missing me now, but she may not dare to say that because it doesn't fit with the narrative that's been promulgated by the leader. He has to say, I'm a bad man to maintain his own status. It may just be, and I speak humbly, that my stand for righteousness, my stand for truth, has caught him out. And he doesn't know any other than to, you know, hit back in a vicious way uh, to shut me up and cast me out. And maybe that's happened to many, many others. And it's, I suggest it has, right back to 1959, when this awful twist of scriptural, the scriptural uh, beauty of separation was introduced into a church, uh, quite against previous teachings. So I, I would hasten to say that uh, the way that the PBCC claim their leader was Derby is in jeopardy. 
In fact, I think the religion stopped in 59 and started again with a doctrine that was spurious and against Christian teaching. Uh, scripture is perfectly clear. You honour your father and your mother. That's the word of God. Who are we to um, encourage children to turn against parents? So this religion destroys families. Happened to my father with his father. Happened to me with my father and mother. Just arbitrary cut off. And uh, I would implore everyone to look at that YouTube video, which I think is on my website, uh, Doctrine That Divides. And you see my parents speaking there very effectively. And he, my father speaks of giving the children a choice, a free choice, when they're 18. So the education up to the age of 18 needs to be uh, full and complete so that um, uh, young people in the PBCC and other courts are able to make their own decisions in life and they need to know about alternatives. That's only right. That's only respectful. Um, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. So that's beautiful. You know, people say to me, careful Lance, they might kill you, you know. No, 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 no. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You uh, get in touch with Christ and uh, he'll look after you. You put your faith and trust in him and it finishes off so beautifully. And I will dwell in the house of Jehovah for the length of days. So there's a settlement. And we used to say that in the in the religion, you know, we're, we're, we're safe here. We're in the house of Jehovah. I thought I was until until I wasn't. Uh, so I'm warning everybody: if you're in a, a system that's run by a leader, if he turns against you, you mincemeat. You're finished. That's not scriptural. That's not according to that psalm. We need to create a system where you can put your not create. We, it's Christ supremely, isn't it? Um, where you can put your absolute trust and confidence and know that he'll never let you down. He'll see you through, right through to eternity. Yeah, right through death. He's won the victory over death. Nothing can hold him. No, the stone couldn't hold him. No, death couldn't hold him. He broke through the bands of death and rose again. And uh, he wants us to be in the gain of that, that uh, happiness, so that we think, above the line you know we start taking ownership uh, of our situation take up our responsibilities we hold ourselves accountable we're in victory all things work together for good to those that love god we're not below the line thinkers blaming others making excuses in denial and uh victim talk you know and delivering people to satan for destruction what's all that about we actually uh, we, we need a positive mindset, which is focused on quality of life and results, actions, making the right decisions, to, making the right decisions to make the right actions so the results uh, just happen. And that's God coming in for you. If you think you can or think you can't, either way you'll be right. So we need to realise that God has put us in touch with Christ, so we're on the winning side if we're in touch with him. This is the greater. It's a spiritual battle. It's a, it's a life that's um, in touch with the heavenlies. There's a fight going on, isn't there? It's played out on earth. And uh, there's something greater than us. I stand in awe of that. And I trust that I'm humbly in touch with it because I need to be because I can't do this myself. God's given me a mind, given me what I've got, uh, which I want to use for his glory and praise. I'm not sure what sort of a job I'm doing it, but if we all take that view that we're actually doing God's work down here, it helps to open up our spectrum, it gets us out of our rut, the rut of money making, the rut of materialism, the rut of uh, uh, 
getting richer and just doing business and going to work every day, it gets a bit hollow after a bit, doesn't it? Surely COVID's taught us that. That uh, life after life just going after money and position and power at the expense of others. No, you'll you'll finish up sad. Sorry, I'm not threatening you, but better to be in touch with Christ and find that your whole vista opens up, your life opens up, and you become settled. And I my life is not going to be defined by my past. My life is not being defined by the fact I've been in a cult until I was 61. No, I'm moving forward, moving on to better things. And I trust that the cult will reform into a, a Christian organisation. Uh, yeah, Christian, Christ-like, the spirit of Christ, which is new covenant, new covenant ministry, new covenant ministers who forgive and bless and demonstrate and live and uh, convey the spirit of divine grace, blessing and healing.